Hi, my name is John Snape, and I put together this little video to show you a teaser for a programming class that's coming up on educator.com for visual C sharp programming. And what I want to do in this video is just make a quick little web browser and show you how easy it is to make one inside of uh, Visual Studio. Now I'm going to go ahead and open Visual Studio 2010 Professional. Now if you're using the 2010 Express version, that's fine. It will work with this project also. Don't worry about not having the 2010 Professional version. This just happens to be the version I have. Whatever version you have is perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project and I'm going to choose the Visual C Sharp Windows Windows Forms application. I'm just going to name it Web Browser and then I'll click OK. Now here is my form here. I'm going to go ahead and choose my properties and click on the form and uh, I'm going to change the name to Web Browser and if I spell it correctly it will actually be much better in Visual C Sharp and there's our name right here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Let me make this a little bit smaller at least for now and then I'm going to come over to my toolbox and pin it open. Now if you don't have the toolbox, if your toolbox is closed just go ahead and view and choose toolbox and then what we want to do is we want to put all of our controls that we're going to use onto our form and this is our form and then we'll close the toolbox and we'll work on the actual properties and all of the code. So first we want to do, we want to get a tool strip container and just drop it here and then we're going to choose this doc fill in form and then we're going to come over here and grab a tool strip and drop it up here in the top part of the uh, tool strip container and then we'll come up here and grab a web browser and drop it in the bottom part. And you can see that it fills up the bottom part. So that's all the things we need from the toolbox so we can minimize that one. Let's open this properties window a little better and first thing we want to do we have our web browser uh, clicked here. You can see that it's chosen here. So we're just going to name this web box just so it's easier for us to type in code. And then we're going to come up here to our uh, tool strip and we'll go ahead and uh, open this little uh, pop out menu here and we're going to do system and we're going to do hidden that way we get rid of that little uh, grabber bar that always ends up on the left hand side of it. Let's just hide it because we don't actually need that one. So now that we've done that we'll go ahead and we'll, we're going to get a couple buttons here and we'll get a combo box and then we'll get a couple more buttons. So now we have two buttons, a combo box, and let's go ahead and change the name of that one now and we'll just do web combo. That way we, we can easier, it's easier to access it in code. And we're going to change the size of this. Um, let's see how big we can make this. So this size is 847 width. So let's go ahead and make this one say 500. That way we have plenty of space to type in our address in the combo box. So let's check the first box here and we're going to come up here and we're going to name that BTN back and then we'll check the next one and we're going to name that one BTN next and we'll choose this button here and we're going to name that one BTN go and this final one we're going to name BTN Stop. So now we have our four buttons and then you can see that they all have the generic picture icon on it. So let's go ahead and change that one also. So what we're going to come down we're going to choose the image. Now Visual Studio comes with a bunch of images in the VS 2010 image library. If you search for VS 2010 image library dot zip on your uh, C drive, you should find it in the folder for Visual Studio. If not, you can search online and it will tell you exactly where the file is. But we're going to use some of these images from here for our, our toolbar. And what we're going to choose, we're going to get our next 
I'll hold down the control key and click previous and then I'll come down here and we're going to do our hold down the control and choose play and also hold down the control key and choose stop so I have stop go to next go to previous and play chosen as the file name and just click open now this one we know is our back button so that's the go to previous and you can see that it has a magenta background but when I click OK because our transparent color is magenta it automatically makes that magenta clear so let's go to the next button and this one we want to have it as the next and we'll just click OK this one is our go button so I'll go ahead and choose play on that one and this final one is our stop button so I'll go ahead and click stop on that one so now we have back forward go and stop so let me go ahead I'm just going to double click here on this arrow and then I'll double click on this arrow then I'll double click on this arrow and then I'll double click on this arrow so now we have four subroutines for each of the clicks here for each of these buttons on here and what we're going to do we're going to first we're going to go to the back button so we'll click up here in the back and we're going to choose our web box now all I have to do is type web and bo web box is highlighted here so I can just hit the the period key the dot and it will fill in the rest of that value and this is the back key button back so we have go back and then we have our two parentheses because we don't have a anything in there to pass to the go back method so we're just going to have empty parentheses and then of course we end our statement with a semicolon so that's all we actually need for the back button and for this one go forward and again that's all we need for the go forward uh, I'm going to skip over this for now. Let's go down to the stop. And that's all we need to stop. So if it's taking too long to load a page, we just hit stop and it will stop loading. And then finally, this is the one that has the most code in it. And what we want to do, we want first we want to make sure that there's actually something in the combo box before we try to navigate to it. So we're going to use a standard if statement and we have not and what we want to do is so what we'll do is we'll if web combo is nothing we want to make sure it's not nothing then what we'll do I'll hit enter and I'll add our our two um, uh, braces there and if it's there's actually something in that box it's going to run the code that's in here and what we want to do first we want to navigate and we're going to pass it this value here and we'll add our semicolon at the end and now what we want to do is after we've navigated we want to add that address to the combo box so if they want to go back there they can just select it from the combo box automatically so we'll go items dot add and we're going to add the web combo dot text now we want to make sure that we don't have like 5,000 items in our web combo box so what we're going to do we're going to check and see if our web combo dot items dot count is greater than say 20 what we'll do is we're going to remove the very first one so as we add them in if we get more than 20 we'll just start dropping off the previous 
values. That way we'll never have more than 20 in the box and we don't have a combo box that runs way down off of the screen. So let's go ahead and save this. That's our web browser. And now it's ready to run. So we'll go ahead and here's our web browser. Let's put in an address. So we'll go ahead and click go. And let me expand this full screen so you can see that it fills the full screen. And there's our Microsoft.com. And let me put in my website. And you will see that it, it's just like Internet Explorer. Since in Internet Explorer, I'm logged into my web WordPress account for my photography website. I'm logged in here also. And you can see it's just like a regular web browser. Now let me try one more. And let's go to google.com. We'll hit go. So you can see how easy it is to, to go around. But we also have our combo box here where we have our previous values. Now we want to make sure that it's not going to go over 20. So let me go ahead and choose this one. I'm just going to hit this a whole bunch of times so you can see it adds it on. And then we'll hit my, my site a whole bunch of times and you can see it adds that at the end. And then let's just keep hitting Google until we have 20. And you can see there's 20 values. It's not going to go over 20 values. So uh, there's our our uh, web browser in Visual C Sharp. You can see it's a very simple project, something really quick you can put out and you can add to it if you want to. Um, hopefully we'll see you in the class for Visual C Sharp programming on educator.com. Uh, it should be up real soon. I want to thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you soon.